about Shouting at the Rain by Linda M. Hunt, Mulally Mule Hunt. She's the author of Fish in a Tree and um, One for the Murphys, which, it, which are both very famous, very acclaimed, and very good novels um, that you should definitely read. Um, and so, um, her one of her books, her, this one released in 2019, was very popular and so I decided to read it and to figure out why it was such a hit. I have figured that out. I saw that from day one. Um, and so uh, as I began reading, I really realized how deep a book this was and so I decided that I had to um, introduce it and I, and I might possibly make an entire series about it. So let's dive right in and so in the beginning, um, and, okay, actually, so I'm gonna give you a quick summary of the first five chapters, then I'm gonna ask you a few questions, and I think that we're gonna end off with just um, more talk about her other books, and hopefully you will be inspired to read this amazing book, which is definitely, a, yeah, a great read, a hidden gem, and, well, I totally recommend it. So, um, this says that there are two types of people, people who like surprises and don't like surprises, and Delcy McKill does not like surprises. So, she's surprised, yes, when one, when her, one of her best friends, um, Amy Pollock, is at her door. She, Amy got an enormous, got a lead in the film, in the, um, uh, in the play Annie at the, Cape Cod Playhouse, and um, she, and, you know, Annie is an orphan, so she's curious about what it feels like to be an orphan because Delcy is an orphan, and suddenly Delcy is shocked, not because like it's rude or anything, but because she never thought that she had been abandoned and that she was an orphan. Like she never thought of it about it like in that way. Right? She just lived with her grandmother, but yeah, she didn't like think I am an orphan, right? Her, her mother was somewhere, right? Her mother was somewhere, right? And so um, now that she began to think about it as like an abandoned, she's an orphan, she begins to think about it differently her entire life. Um, and so, if you were an orphan, would you feel abandoned, or would you, um, w or would you just feel neutral about it? Because Delcy's mother left her when, and when she was really, really young, so she doesn't even remember her, right? Uh, she doesn't even remember her. She doesn't know how she, how her mother even looked, except save for a, a photograph. Um, and so, yeah, would you, would you um, feel abandoned? Um, would you miss her? Some people say you can't miss what you've never had, but at times you can't. And let's actually talk about that as we get deeper into the book. Um, okay. And so chapter two, um, Delcy is very excited to go to Seaside, right? Because her, um, with her grandmother, she lives with her grandmother. Um, and so at Seaside, she has her friend, Brandy. So they meet every summer when Brandy's family goes that comes there. And so um yeah, every this summer is no different. They meet up, right? And they're best friends. They're best friends and they began to play together since they were really young. And so um but Brandy has changed. First, she wears makeup, a purse and like and like clothes uh, and like expensive clothes. Um, and so, along with that, she starts to like wave off and brush off things like, um, for example, uh, like their fairy house, which is kind of a tradition for them. Uh, along with that, um, 
she 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 says that she has a tan to work on. And so yeah, whatever about the fairy house, and um, and Delcy senses the difference as well. Um, but then and along with that, as Brandy and they and her and Delcy try begin to assemble the rocks to create like stones and like houses and stuff um, out of them as they've always done. Um, Brandy asks if it's too babyish to do it, right? Like if other people will care and something's changed because before Delcy I and mean, Brandy was fun. She um, was always up for something really fun and there was always, she was like Delcy. So what do you think changed? What is the main way do you think that she changed from last year? If last year you assume that she's like Delcy, who's who um you know likes just like casual t-shirts, she really still cares about things like fairy houses. Um, uh, and you know she doesn't really care what anybody thinks. She's still kind of free in my opinion. So what do you think the main way is that Brandy has changed? Um, do you think that this is sort of unavoidable? Um, and. In her eyes, in her eyes, maybe she became better. But do you think that she did truly become better because of this? Like, I mean, to Delcy, I don't know. But I'm just saying, in general, what do you think? As like a person. And let's keep going. So, um, chapter three is called Madre Seal, and soon Delcy says that she has to go for a uh, for um a Man, Manny Petty. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of things have changed, right? Um, and so now, um, Delcy's alone, and so she walks alone on the beach, um, a bit forlorn because she's thinking about how she's an orphan and how if something happened to her grandmother, you know, what she would do. Um, and would Henry and Esme, who are her neighbors in like her small neighborhood, would they adopt her even though they have their own girl, Ruby? So, um, and as her, and, and as she go, and she, and as she's going, she spots a bit, little baby seal. Um, and so at first it looks dead, but it's alive and a park officer is like, a beach patrol officer is like, um, standing around it, putting tape around the seal and making everybody stand back because, because you know, its mother is just out hunting and it put the seal there because, um, you know, she it didn't want it to be in danger. And so, if you were Delcy and you first saw that seal alone, that pup, seal pup abandoned, and you didn't know that her mother was going to come back for, her, for it and that her mother hadn't abandoned it, how would you feel? Would you feel the same? Um, would you sympathize? Would you um, feel really sad that another animal was like this? And when was like you? And when her Madre Seal, and I'm, I want, the reason I'm calling her Madre Seal is because well, Delcy calls her that because a boy near her um, who speaks Spanish was talking something and so she caught the word Madre, which means mother in Spanish. And so that got her really thinking. Um, and so finally, the mother seal comes back and takes her baby along with her into the waves. And so Delcy begins to cry. And do you really think that you can't miss what you've never had? Or do you think that is totally possible? And how? And so um, just think of an example um, from real life. How do you think that Delcy would feel? And yeah, how would you have reacted if you saw Madre Seal? I don't think I would have cried, but I would have, I would have definitely been jealous. And I would have probably been in a bad mood for the rest of the day. Um, but yeah, it might have pushed me over the tipping point and I might have cried. So, on the back, it reads this. And so I just wanted to read this before we continue. And it says, this is the summer Delcy is learning. You don't share your deepest feelings with just anyone. Some friends are glitter and some are glue. And finally, finally, uh, the sun is always in the sky. It just gets hidden sometimes. So first, who do you think is the glitter? Who do you think is just anyone, right? You don't share your deepest feelings with just anyone. Who do you think is that just anyone? Who do you think is that glitter? Um, and, and who do you think is going to be that glue? Um, that, those are some good things to lo lo look out for as you continue in the book. 
as you continue the book. Um, and have you ever had any glitter friends? What do you think that even means? Glue and glitter. What do you think is better? Well, glitter looks amazing on the outside, but glue sticks to you, right? They stick to you. It sticks to you. You want friends that stick with you. Sure, maybe on the outside, they're all glittery, but if they don't stick to you, they're not really friends, right? Like, and so we, we're not really sure who it is, but we've already seen a big change in Brandy. Can Brandy be glitter, or do you think that she is an example of glue? And that she will always be Delcy's friend. And Brandy, even though she's changing, she's always Delcy's friend, right? Because, like, that's something, you know, like, that's a mark of true friendship. How even though you get different passions and different opinions, you can always be friends. You can always go along together. That's a true mark of friendship. Or do you think Delcy is going to be glitter? What do you think? What's, what's your guess? Um, and... Now let's continue on to chapter four, which is called Broken. So she runs all the way back to um, her um, our, her, the, her house where her Grammy is watching The Price is Right. Um, her Grammy likes to watch game shows and, you know, Wheel of Fortune, etc., etc. And so, um, um, so, um, Delcy begins to plead with her gran grandma to please tell her about her mother, right? Like, how she, how she sounded like, how she looked like. Did she love root beer? Was she a runner, right? And so Grammy was shocked, and then she, uh, then, and then when Delcy was like, who's my dad, and what is his name? And so, you know, um, her grandma was shocked. She felt, she looked sad, and she said that she couldn't answer those things because it just stirred those things up, right? And, um... And, you know, like, she didn't really want to talk about it. And she didn't know. Um, and so she said that she didn't want to talk about it because, quote, the same reason I don't drink coffee. Because it hurts my stomach and it makes me feel all terrible inside. And why would I do anything that makes me feel like that? Unquote. And so Delta just wants to know more about her, right? After seeing that Madre Steel, she really felt, I don't know. How do you think that she felt? Why do you think that she suddenly wanted to t know more about her mother? Um, do you think that by the end of the book she will find her mother? Do you think that she will be able to, um, do you think she'll be able to, um, at least come to terms with it? Like, by that I mean, do you think that she'll be able to be able to live with something like that? Something like that hovering over her head? Or do you think that she won't be able to do that? Um, so this might be like a coming of age story. This might be growing up, re you know, learning to live with something like that. Or, yeah, maybe her mother will come. Who knows, right? And finally, Grammy says to just watch the showcase showdown with her. And that, you know, she, and that meant that she wasn't really going to answer it. And so, Delcy's so angry and so sad that... She just goes upstairs, and when she sees the picture of her mother in a frame covered in like in glitter and things like that, um, she um she grabs it and throws it to the floor, breaking it right. And she thinks that it's not really fair, right? And 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 as she looks at the broken pieces, she feels broken too. Um. So, do you think that Grammy even has a right to not talk about those things? Um, sure, it might make her feel bad, but still, if you're a Dulce, you would want to know everything possible about your mom, right? Or do you think you would not want to know about her? Especially after watching Madre Seal, right? Her mother did not come back for her, right? And that, that's, I mean, that sounds like, that's not like an amazing example of like an amazing parent, right? Um... <clears throat> so, do you think that you would not like her? Um, and yeah, again, do you think that Grammy has a right to with withhold information? Do you think she just say it for the sake of her daughter? I mean, for her grandmother. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> for her granddaughter. Um, <clears throat> and finally, do you think that her grandmother is ever gonna say some talk about it or or not? What about Delcy? Will she ever um, calm down? Or do you think that this is going to be something that's going to take long, a long time? Like, even the entirety of this book. Finally, what do you think that this book is going to be about? Like, what do you think it's going to be its focus? 
He's always a books focus, and I'm right now rooting for a book. Actually, I don't really have any right now. I, I mean, I have an entire pile over here, but still, point is, a lot of stories can happen in one book, right? A lot of things can happen in one book. But at the same time, there's like mostly one thing that's get, that gets completed. Mostly a lot of things, but at the same time, one main theme. What do you think that's going to be? Do you think that's going to be her um, making friends with Delcy again? I mean, with, um, sorry, Brandy again? Or do you think it's going to be her making, um, you know, um, trying to um, settle in once more with the fact that she's an orphan and she never thought about it like that, right? So, with, and with that thought, do you think she's going to try to settle in with that thought? What do you think? Um, or do you think it's gonna be something different that we haven't even read about yet? Which is actually really possible. And I'm gonna say, might, yeah, be a good bet. Though, I will say, I am not gonna spoil it. In my, there's an enormous chance that it was actually one of those two. Or there's also an enormous chance that it's gonna be afterwards. I, I'm not gonna say. But yeah, I'm not tricking you. I am just saying, all of them are equally the same. That's what I'm gonna say. Um, uh, and then after that, after that, um, so they live, so chapter five says olive oil. And so they live um, at the end of a dirt road, like a lollipop trip, like a lollipop. Dirt road all the way up there, and like a lollipop, just a round um, road, like round circular drive, that there's four houses there. Um, uh, and so, um, there, and so in one house lives her, Delcy and her grandmother, and the other, there's Olive Tinsley, and then in the other, there's, um, um, Esme, Henry, and, um, and their daughter, Ruby, lives there. Um, and so, and so Olive, um, says, Delcy says to Olive reminds her of a hurricane, right? She's really stormy, always angry about something and grumpy and kind of mean, right? So there's something, but she doesn't, she just seems um, angry. And so, um, when, and Olive this time tells her Grammy and Elsie that Henry has done something terrible. And so, um, and so, um, Ruby and Henry had hung up all of this, all of, um, Esme's, um, silver spoons out on the, um, on the big tree that Olive really likes. Um, and so, Olive's really angry about this, right? Um, it's making noise, she just doesn't like it, it might harm the tree, even though that's, that, all of that's like really unfound and it's like totally not gonna happen. And so, um, Henry and Ruby, um, you know, Henry's a really nice person, easygoing. And so, um, after a short conversation, um, you know, with Olive keep complain, with Olive complaining to Henry that he really does need to do something about this, and that if he doesn't, well, there's going to be trouble, and that he and that he needs to um you know um straighten up and do a better job of things um. And so, what do you think? Do you think that um? Do you think that Olive? What do you think happened to Olive to make her so angry all the time, right? Um, do you think that, why do you think she's so angry all the time? Like, would you be, I mean, there has to be a reason, right? And so Delcy says, um, and her Delcy says that she's had a lot of loss and sadness, right? Um, at least that's what her grandma says. But still, do you think that 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 she has a right to do that um, and to be kind of mean to um, Henry, or do you think that that something really terrible did happen? Do you think we're gonna learn about that by the end of the book, or do you think that that's gonna be one of the unanswered loose ends that we're going to have to fill in, a uh, villain? So, what do you think? Um, is there's a lot of reasons that she might be angry. Like it's because of her past, because she's defensive about something, she's just hiding something. Is she trying to avoid looking weak, or is she just a bit mean, right? Um, and so, um, Olive, and so, her grandma, Delcy's grandma, finally decides, yes, thank you for um, telling about us about this, Olive. She says that, and then she says that, yeah, 
this is a very important thing. And so Alex was like, yeah, of course. We need to do something about that person. We need to do something about the spoons. And then, and then her grandma says, yeah, we, we, this is a very important issue. We should totally make Henry and Ruby feel better because, well, um, Esme is uh, gone for a while um, and she's gonna come back soon. But for right now, she um, is traveling or something. It doesn't really say, I think. Um, and so, yeah, um, that's why um, they even hung up the spoons because Ruby thought that the spoons taking them together sounded like her mother's laughter. Very poetic way of thinking about things. Uh, and so, yeah, and her grandma said, yeah, we should let, thank you for bringing, us th bringing this to our attention. We really shouldn't make Henry and Ruby feel better, right? That's not what Olive really originally came for. She was raging about the spoons. Um, but her grandma says that the best thing to do is just um, baking them something really delicious, right? And um, she offers Olive a chance to bake with her. And, Delcy, and so Olive says no. Delcy knows that her grandma is going to make her go to Olive's tomorrow so that she can pick up something that they don't even need so that um, Olive can um, join in because she sort of looked like she wanted to. So do you think there really is a better, kinder person beneath Olive's, Olive's um, tough outside or do you think that's not possible? Um, uh, and I hope that you enjoyed this book so far. We've talked about a lot of issues. And this book is going to cover a lot of fun stuff. And this is just the beginning. You haven't even read, like, half... Yeah, of course, you haven't read a lot of it. I'm just introducing it to you. But you have... There are so many other things to come. This is just the beginning. The tip of, an, of the iceberg. Um, there's so much more. And I hope that you enjoy um, this amazing book by award-winning author Linda Mulally Hunt. And I'll see you next time for more book reviews, more introductions, and more book talks. Have a great rest of your day and keep reading. Bye!